Mae West and Raquel Welch are two Hollywood sex symbols from two completely different eras. But their two worlds collided in 1970 when they both appeared in the film Myra Breckenridge. While one might think the meeting of these two generational figureheads might have been a happy occasion, it was anything but. The two could be found butting heads over the course of production and the film was a disaster. Gore Vidal was the writer of the book the film was based upon and his unlikely association only adds to the whole episode's hilarity. Join Facts First as we explore how this Mae West and Raquel Welch feud caused their movie to flop. In 1970, 20th Century Fox released a film called Myra Breckenridge. It was based upon the novel of the same name by Gore Vidal, and its satirical plot was decidedly controversial. The controversy of the novel had helped to boost both its sales and Gore's overall profile, and it was only a matter of time before Hollywood decided it wanted a part of this lucrative controversy. The novel was released in 1968, after which point Gore's face could quickly be found gracing the covers of literary magazines debating whether or not it was offensive or progressive. Gore had no involvement in the film adaptation and went on to renounce it as garbage. Today, the film adaptation isn't notable for the fact that it was adapted from a work by the late Gore Vidal. Nor is it especially notable for its controversial plot, which revolves around a disenfranchised trans woman. Instead, it's notable for the fact that it featured the pairing of two sex symbols from two very different generations. It featured then-modern sex symbol Raquel Welch in the titular role and Golden Age sex symbol Mae West in the supporting role of Letitia Van Allen. If the promise of seeing the novel adapted to the screen wasn't enough to draw audiences in, 20th Century Fox hoped the unlikely pairing of Mae West and Raquel Welch would be. Sadly, they were mistaken. Not only that, but the film's production sparked a feud between the two actresses that lasted until the point of Mae West's death. The film was meant to be a satire on Hollywood, but it didn't strike a chord with audiences. Though it was intended to be progressive in its approach to the subject matter, it's more notable nowadays for being unintentionally offensive thanks to its depiction of the title character. For one thing, a real-life woman plays the title character. For another thing, the concept is played for laughs. The offensive nature of Myra Breckenridge may be what draws criticism today, but the film was simply a bore to audiences on its release. Queer audiences, who can stand the unintentionally offensive aspects of the film, have grown to appreciate it for its camp appeal, much of which comes from its two stars. The fact that May and Raquel became embroiled in a feud during the picture's production only adds to this appeal. Raquel controls the narrative on her and May's feud. Between the two of them, Raquel is the only one still around. Because of this, she's been given the opportunity to control much of the narrative about it. According to Raquel herself, the feud started as a result of May not wanting to work with her. Of course, there was likely a good deal of professional jealousy involved in May West not wanting to be around on set with her younger co-star. Raquel claims May had it written in her contract she would only work in the evening, and this intentionally conflicted with the hours Raquel was willing to work. Because of this, they were rarely on set together during production. Still, May found ways to antagonize Raquel without actually being there. Raquel says she and May only filmed one scene together in total. This was due to the fact that May didn't want to work with her. Though they were rarely forced to interact during production, that didn't stop May West from attempting to exercise control over Raquel's wardrobe from the shadows. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Mae West was allegedly jealous of her younger co-star. Mae wanted to ensure that she was the only star in the film who was afforded the opportunity to wear what she referred to as a non-color. One day of shooting, Raquel Welsh was set to go in front of the cameras in a black dress. When she went to her dressing room to put the dress on, she found it wasn't there. It was revealed that none other than Mae had taken the dress out of the dressing room. Mae's reasoning was that she was wearing a white dress, and both black and white were non-colors. Raquel couldn't be wearing a non-color dress in the same film where May was wearing one, at least according to the Golden Age star. If Raquel is to be believed, she wasn't all that personally upset by the incidents that occurred on set. Raquel claims she simply felt bad by how apparently afraid of her May West was. It makes a lot of sense May would have been intimidated by Raquel, as she was a popular sex symbol of the time. May had risen to prominence as a sex symbol many decades prior so she was understandably nervous about sharing the screen with the much younger star. The onset turmoil between the two certainly didn't help, 
when it came time for Myra Breckenridge to be released in 1970. Films with Rocky productions rarely ever turn out great, and this show business satire was no exception. It was famously derided by Gore Vidal, who was always keen to point out the aforementioned fact that he had no technical involvement with the film. And the film didn't help the careers of either May or Raquel. May West had little reason to be intimidated. May West was born in the 1890s and grew up in vaudeville thanks to her parents. As an adult, she began performing in dramatic plays of her own writing. These plays took off, and one of them ended up catching the attention of Hollywood executives. Her first film was Night After Night, which premiered in 1932. May's role in the film wasn't large, but she made a big impression on audiences. For her next picture, she was given the opportunity to star in a film adaptation of one of her own plays. The result was 1933's She Done Him Wrong, which was a major success. It was even one of the very first to be nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. Though She Done Him Wrong was a huge hit, but it was also slightly controversial due to adult themes. The same could be said of May's follow-up work, No Angel. Many credit these two works with inspiring the creation of the motion picture Production Code. Mae West left Hollywood behind in the early 40s, and one of the reasons for doing so was because she felt infringed upon by censorship. Following her leave from Hollywood in the 40s, she fled to the stage. There, she was given more creative freedom. She returned to Hollywood when she felt that censors were finally starting to let up. She viewed Myra Breckenridge as being a progressive work worthy of taking part in, and it's sad she wasn't able to get along with Raquel Welch during production. Mae West's last appearance in a film came several years after the release of Myra Breckenridge. This was in 1977's Sextet, which was another provocative film that the sexually progressive May found worthy of her iconic presence. Following the release, she suffered a number of strokes and passed away in November of 1980. She was 88 years old. Raquel Welch is still around and still talks about her feud with Mae West. Now it's time to hear from you. Which part of this story was most surprising to hear about? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the Join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Factsverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99. There are hours of members only videos waiting for you with new videos added every month. And we're actively working on bringing even more features to help fans like you connect with other members and get more of your favorite content. Just click join and we'll see you inside the membership tab.